your Bibles this morning, would ask you to please turn to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 15 and verse 13. Brother Joshua came over last night and he asked me, did I have a settled mind on what to preach? And I told him I did have a settled mind on the two sermons, but I wasn't sure which one to preach morning and which one to preach evening. But before I went to sleep, I had a, a very firm conviction of what to preach this morning. And then, just before I left to come to church, a member texted me a verse of scripture I'm about to read. And that was the text that was on my heart. She didn't make any, make any comments. She just sent that text, that verse of scripture. It takes the power of the Holy Ghost to do something like that. I want you to listen carefully because there's no doubt in my mind this is what God would have us to look at today. We'll be studying about the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> I think probably we, we know more about God the Son and God the Father than we do about the Holy Ghost. And sometimes because of a lack of understanding about the Holy Ghost, sometimes there are false teachings that people swallow because they don't understand what the Word of God says about the Holy Ghost. Let me read Romans 14, 17 first and then Romans 15, 13. Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the definition of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. It's not meat and drink. It's not a material kingdom. But it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And then in chapter 15 and verse 13, the word of God says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. Now what's the kingdom of heaven? righteousness and peace and joy and now he says in uh, chapter 15 verse 13 now the God of all, all hope the word hope doesn't mean what we typically think it means today biblically the word hope means confidence in what God has said and believing what God has said and when we have that hope when we have that confidence in God and we're going to have that peace and that joy that he speaks about in this verse of scripture as well as 1417. We must believe God. We must believe that God is. We must believe that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now this verse says, Romans 15 verse 13, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, the only way that you can, the scripture speaks about abounding in hope, abounding in confidence, is through the power of the Holy Ghost. And we need the Holy Ghost. Every day of our lives, we need to ask God to fill us with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Don't be afraid of those terms. Uh, we need the Holy Ghost. And the Word of God makes it plain here. It's through the power of the Holy Ghost that we have that hope and that confidence in God. We believe because of the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The Holy Ghost bears witness that God is omnipotent. The Holy Ghost bears witness in our hearts and in our minds as we read the Word of God. We know that the Word of God is true because the power of the Holy Ghost makes it evident that God's Word is true. Whenever we try, when I try to preach the Word of God, I desire to preach in power and demonstration of the Spirit. That is, that I would be filled with the Spirit of God that I might be able to have confidence that God is going to help us as we try to study the Word of God. 
And so when we have that hope through the power of the Holy Ghost, when we have that hope, that confidence through the power of the Holy Ghost, then we're going to have peace and joy in our soul. Every day of my life, I can have that confidence. I can have that confidence in God. I can believe God. I can trust God. One of the songs that we sang was, Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. We've got to learn to trust God. We've got to learn to believe in God. We've got to learn to put God first in our lives. And when we put God first, we know that God will take care of us. We have no fear of anything that's going to happen. We have peace and joy. We don't worry about current events. We don't worry about the government. We don't worry about anything. If our confidence is in the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, if our confidence is in the power of God, the power of the Holy Ghost, then we're going to have great hope or confidence that what God has said, God will perform. Every promise of God is sure and steadfast. God cannot lie. Therefore, we have that hope because of the power of the Holy Ghost. We have that confidence in us because of the power of God that testifies to the truth that God is our Father and that God is omnipotent and God knows every need that we have. God's Word says, The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. I don't worry about tomorrow. That songwriter that wrote that song, he had great confidence. He had peace and joy because of the hope that he had through the power of the Holy Ghost. We need to know the power of the Holy Ghost. Go with me in your Bibles back to John chapter 14. I want you to go home and remember and, and always study that uh, Romans chapter 15. Well, Romans 14, 17 and Romans 15, 13. Both those verses are extremely important. Do you think it was by chance that that person that texted me just no, no greeting, no good morning preacher, no I love you, nothing, just the verse of scripture, Romans 15, 13, that was all that was in that text. That was the power of the Holy Ghost that moved in her to send that message to me to confirm to me what I already felt in my heart. That's the subject that you are to preach about today is the power of the Holy Ghost. We have no power without God. Jesus makes this statement, without me, ye can do nothing. But we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Look now in your Bibles at John chapter 14. He begins this as he's telling them that he's about to leave this world. He's about to be crucified. He speaks comforting words to his apostles. And he says in John 14 verse 1, Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. We are taught repeatedly in the word of God that we are not to be afraid, that we are to trust in God. Our heart should not be troubled. If you're worried about anything at all, it's because you don't feel the power of the Holy Ghost. If you feel the power of the Holy Ghost, you're going to have that hope. You're going to have that confidence. God is going to take care of me. I'm a child of the King. I don't have to worry about anything because my God will supply all of my needs and all of your needs. Everything that we have, God will supply. Everything that's good that we have, God will supply those needs for us. So he says in John 14, 1, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Come down to verse 15 for the sake of time. You go and read all of John chapter 14. This whole chapter is full of the power of the Holy Ghost. That's what we're talking about today is that we might have hope, hope that we might have confidence through the power of the Holy Ghost. In uh, John chapter 14, come down to verse 15. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Brethren, one of the greatest blessings that we have is to have the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. And when you feel the comfort of the Holy Ghost 
you're going to have peace and joy and confidence in God. Your hope is going to be strong when you feel the power of the Holy Ghost. So he says, if you will keep my commandments, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Let me just, lest I forget this before the end. I want you to know there are two main functions of the Holy Ghost. One is to comfort the people of God when they're keeping the commandments of God. That's what he's talking about in this chapter. He's talking about if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter. I need comforting from time to time in my life. I cry out to Jesus almost every night of my life. During the night, I cry out with a loud voice, Jesus, help me, help me. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. You can't face the troubles and problems and heartaches of life without the power of the Holy Ghost. But when you can feel the power of the Holy Ghost, your hope and your confidence and your peace and your joy is going to be full. So Jesus gives us a promise here. If you keep my commandments, then I'm going to give you the comforter. Another function of the comforter is to convict us because of sin. Now, he comforts us when? When we're keeping the commandments of God. If you love me, keep my commandments and I will send the comforter. So the Holy Ghost comes as the comforter when we're keeping the commandments of God. But when we're not keeping the commandments of God, he comes and convicts us and convinces us because of the sin that's in our lives. So we're either going to experience the power of the Holy Ghost as the comforter or we're going to experience the power of the Holy Ghost as the convictor. You'll see that before we before we finish the Lord willing this morning. Uh, come down in your Bibles to John chapter 14. Come down to verse uh, 18. John 14 verse 18 he says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Now, I thought he said he's going to send the comforter to us. And now he turns around in verse 18 and says, I'll not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I want you to know, brethren, that you cannot distinguish between the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. And when Jesus says, I'm going to send the comforter to you, he comes in the person of the Father and of the Son. The Holy Ghost comes as the Father and of the Son, and they make their abode with us. The comforter the Holy Ghost, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost come and make their abode with us when we keep the commandments of God. So he says in verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see, ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. Come down to verse 23. He says, if a man, Jesus, in verse 23, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. Brethren, if I say I love Jesus and I'm not keeping the commandments of God, I'm a liar. The word of God makes that plain in 1 John. If we say that we know God and we're not keeping the commandments of God, we're a liar. If we're not keeping the commandments of God, we do not know God and we are not loving God. He says in this verse of scripture, if a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him. When you're manifesting your love to God, what does God do? God manifests his love to us. If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him. And we will come, we. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost we will come unto him and make our abode with him. I'll tell you, if you can feel the presence of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, you're going to feel the power of God, and you're going to have great hope and confidence, and you're going to have peace and joy because of the power of the Holy Ghost. We need that power every day of our lives. We cannot defeat. The Word of God says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And I need the power of the Holy Ghost every day of my life, and you do also. You can't resist the devil uh, and him flee from you unless you have the power of the Holy Ghost. He says in verse 26, he says, But the Comforter, uh, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. 
I'll tell you, brethren, the Holy Ghost is a comforter. The Holy Ghost convicts us because of sin. And the Holy Ghost is our teacher. The Holy Ghost is our teacher. When I try to teach you, it's only under the power of the Holy Ghost that I'm able to teach. And you're able to learn. And you're able to listen. And you're able to hear. It's only under the power, under the power of the Holy Ghost. Look at John chapter 16. John chapter 16 and verse 7. I want you to see that the Holy Ghost is not only the comforter and the convictor, but he is also our teacher. John chapter 16 and verse 7. The Word of God says, Jesus is speaking. He says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Come down to verse 13. Howbeit when he, the, the spirit of truth, what's he called in verse 7? What's he called? The comforter. What's he called in verse 13? The spirit of truth. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Who does the Holy Ghost testify about? Jesus. Jesus. I tell you, brethren, there are some people that all they want to do is talk about the Holy Ghost. And they talk about things that are not true. And they want to just give glory to the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost deserves glory and power and honor. But I'll tell you, the Holy Ghost testifies of Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost does not desire glory unto himself. He desires that we as the people of God understand Jesus is the name that's above every name. And the Holy Ghost moves in us to worship and honor and glorify our King, our Savior, the King of Kings, Jesus Christ. That's what the Holy Ghost does. He teaches us about Jesus. Have you ever learned anything from the Word of God? You know who taught you? Amen. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Go in now. What does John 14 tell us we have to do to have the Holy Ghost? What does John 14 keep his commandments? Remember that. Remember that. If you want the Holy Ghost, you must be keeping the commandments of God. If you're not keeping the commandments of God, you can pray all you want to for the Holy Ghost and you're not going to feel the power of the Holy Ghost. If you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter. If we keep his commandments. Now turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Listen to verse beginning in verse 29. Please follow this in your Bibles. Because I want you to know how to get the Holy Ghost. We're born of the Spirit of God one time. The Holy Spirit comes and quickens us. We were dead in trespasses and sins. And the Holy Spirit came and quickened us. And we were made alive by the power of the Holy Ghost. But we need the Holy Ghost every day as we live. We need the Holy Ghost to strengthen us. We need the Holy Ghost to give us power. In Acts chapter 5, verse 29 through 32, the Word of God says, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Did Peter have power right here? They were threatening Peter. They were threatening his life. They were threatening the lives of the apostles. Were they afraid? They were not afraid. Why were they not afraid? Why, what did they have? They had peace and joy. Why did they have peace and joy? Because they had the power of the Holy Ghost. And that gave them confidence in God. They could say we ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom he slew and hanged on a tree. I'll tell you he was pier speaking piercing words to those people. He says, the one that you pierced and hanged on a tree, him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Verse 32 now. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that what are the last two words there? Obey. Obey him. God gives the Holy Ghost to them that obey him. If you'll serve God, if you put God first, God's going to give you the Holy Ghost. 
He gives the Holy Ghost to them that keep his commandments, John 14. He gives the Holy Ghost to them that obey him, Acts 5, verse 32. Turn to Luke chapter 11. Here's something else you have to do to get the Holy Ghost. Look in your Bibles in Luke chapter 11. And again now, who's the Holy Ghost going to testify to you about? Jesus. He's going to testify to you about Jesus. He's not going to speak of himself. He's not going to give glory to himself. He's going to give glory to Jesus. Look in your Bibles now at uh, Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11 beginning in verse 9. Verse nine. The word of God says, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. How does the devil twist and pervert that scripture? Just ask for what you want. If you want riches, you ask for it. And God's going to give it to you. You ask for a big house, God's going to give it to you. You ask for a Cadillac, God's going to... That is not the teaching of Jesus Christ. In fact, if you go back and read from Matthew, uh, the same passage of scripture, it makes it very clear that it's not talking about natural blessings. It's talking about spiritual blessings. Amen. And so he says, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. He says, for every one that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. And he that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you, that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? What do you need to ask for every day of your life? You need to ask for the Holy Spirit. Guide me. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Guide me every day. Give me strength every day. You'll mess up real bad. You'll destroy your life unless you begin to be more obedient to God. The people of God, sometimes they wax cold. Sometimes their love waxes cold. And when that happens, they begin to drift away from God. And when they drift away from God, they're headed down a path of destruction. The Holy Spirit is only given to those that obey Him, those that keep His commandments, and those that ask him, if ye being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Now turn to Luke chapter 24 because just before Jesus was crucified, please look in your Bibles at Luke chapter 24. Just before Jesus was crucified, he was telling the apostles to uh, go to Jerusalem and to wait there because the Holy Ghost was going to be poured out. Uh, in Jerusalem and the power was going to be poured out in Jerusalem. Luke chapter 24, the last words that are, just, that are recorded here in the book of Luke, the last words of Jesus that are recorded here. Luke chapter 24 verse 49, Jesus says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with what? With power from on high. Where does that power come from? According to Romans 15, 13. That power comes from the Holy Ghost. We need the power of God. He told them go to Jerusalem and stay there. Until you receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Now go to Acts chapter 1. Let's see that they did what he told them to do. In Acts chapter 1. Listen please to verses let me read verses 4, 5, and 8. Acts chapter 1, verses 4, 5, and 8. I know I'm going a little faster than normal. But listen, brethren, there's so much important truth about the Holy Ghost that we need. And you can go home and read. You copy these scriptures down. You go read and study. And you learn more about the Holy Ghost. You learn about the power that you get when you have the Holy Ghost. Do you think I could deny God and go away from God? Absolutely. The only thing that will keep that from happening is, is if I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. God has to strengthen me. I have to put on the whole armor of God. I have to fight the good fight of faith. Or else I'll be destroyed. Just like you. Look now in Acts chapter 1. He told them to go to Jerusalem. Stay in Jerusalem. Acts chapter 1. 
beginning in verse 4. Now Jesus is going to speak to them after his resurrection. What I just read from Luke chapter 24, 49 was before his crucifixion. Now look at Acts chapter 1 beginning in verse 4. The word of God says, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait. For the promise of the Father, which saith ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. What was going to happen when they were baptized with the Holy Ghost? They were going to receive what? Power. Power. Verse 8. He says, but ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. They would receive power after the Holy Ghost came upon them. Then you go to Acts chapter 2 and you read about the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon them. And the people were shocked at the great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And that was all prophesied by Joel in Joel chapter 2. You go home and read and study that in the latter portion of Joel. Now look at Acts chapter uh, 2 verse 36. Now listen carefully. We're, we're approaching the end, but I want you to get this carefully. Acts 2 verse 36. After the Holy Ghost was poured out on them, and they saw the power of God manifest, and every man heard in his own tongue. In Acts 2 verse 36, the word of God says, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Have you ever been convicted by the Holy Spirit? These people were convicted by the Holy Spirit. And as they were convicted, they cried out, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you. Is that doing what God tells you to do? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you want the gift of the Holy Ghost, if you want to be baptized with the Holy Ghost, you've got to keep the commandments of God, you've got to obey God, you've got to repent and turn away from sin, and you've got to be baptized. Verse 39 says, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That's to you too. Everybody in this building. Everyone that's been called from death into life, God's with them. Go with me in closing now to Isaiah chapter 63. How do you feel about everything about the Holy Ghost so far? Good. Good. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 11 we're to behold the goodness of God and the severity of God. Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God. Toward thee goodness if thou continue in his goodness otherwise severity if you turn away from the Lord. Look at Isaiah chapter 63. We'll close right here. Isaiah 63 uh, verses 8, 9, and 10. The word of God says in Isaiah, Isaiah 63, 8. For he said, Surely they are my people, children that will not lie. So he was their savior. That is, he delivered them. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. Was God touched with the afflictions of his people? And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bare them and carried them all the days of old. Is that good? Was that great blessings? Listen carefully now to verse 10. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy and he fought against them. God can be your friend. What does Jesus say? You're my friends. If you do whatsoever I commanded you. God can be your friend or God can be your enemy. And if God ever becomes your enemy, you're going to be experiencing a hell here on this earth. May God help us to rejoice under the blessings of the Holy Spirit rather than being convicted of the Holy Spirit is my prayer for Christ's sake. Amen.